So starting off here, right? Episodic expertise. This is where a lot of consulting is used. Uh, think of grant proposals, think of um, marketing projects, um, uh, bring on a new software program of some sort, right? So uh, you bring them in, they do their job, uh, the project's over, off they go. And, you're, uh, and you can kind of draw a circle around that's what that person is here to do. Um, ongoing expertise. Now you don't see qu this quite so much, but um, it depends on how you define ongoing. I mean, you know, campaigns now, fundraising campaigns last four months, years, right? So um, maybe you have somebody working with you on an ongoing basis. How about coaching? Uh, I certainly see that with uh, uh, some folks I work with, right, where, where they're coaching on an ongoing basis of a particular staff person in an organization or a group of people. And so that's a longer term project. Uh, and then in that world of longer term project, right, there's interim leadership uh, when you're in between. And sometimes bringing in an interim leader can be the best thing you can do because they can make a lot of changes that the uh, next person uh, doesn't have to um, uh, look like the bad guy to make that happen. But um, uh, it, it's, it, that's a good way to use a, what somebody might call a consultant. Uh, what else, kind of related to that interim leadership might be the hatchet man uh, uh, idea where somebody is coming in to evaluate and make changes. They may not be an interim leader, but they might uh, be the person who can make recommendations at a key moment of the organization's life to say, you ought to be doing this, you ought not to be doing that. Uh, the spark, uh, start a new program, uh, get something you know up and running, maybe bring in somebody who has a lot of energy in a place that you need to have that energy because the staff for some reason isn't, um, you know, d d isn't organized or isn't pulling together like they should be. And uh, I've seen this every once in a while and with the right people, it works out very well. Uh, it's kind of, you know, you think about, um, you know, I'm from Philadelphia, right? And I'm not gonna get into the Eagles, but you know that so much except to say that they changed cl coaches and a lot of things changed. And so maybe it's that like little coach thing changed and well, you know where they ended up this year. Uh, and then uh, transfer knowledge. Uh, that's um, that's a really important um, uh, skill that somebody can bring to your organization that you just need to ramp up something that you don't know anything about. Maybe you're getting into social media and you need to learn about uh, all, not only the mechanics of doing it, but a lot of the background for doing it. You can bring in somebody to, in effect, teach your uh, people. In fact, I've done that. I've I've come in and uh, taught people uh, how to use uh, direct mail, and um, it, it, that's been very helpful for the organization in the long term. Uh, then evaluation, right? Somebody's there. These are very valuable people because there's not a lot of them do this who so come in and evaluate something and can tell you whether you're doing on the right course or not. Uh, you see this a lot in the uh, grant proposal world. Um, pinpoint an issue, right, being a troubleshooter, pilot a new program, and even make contacts for you or help uh, bring in uh, other network contacts. And I'm not saying like in fundraising you bring in other donors, I'm saying that you are uh, somehow broadening that organization's network as a consultant to make them a stronger organization overall. So it's important, however, that people kind of step back and say, okay, so what's the impact of consulting? And one of the big questions I get is, won't a consultant just make more work for me? Well, yeah, honestly, yeah, that is entirely possible. It might be that a consultant will not, particularly the kind who advise as opposed to the kind of doing like a, some sort of project. Um, it could well be that they're going to make more work for you. And it's, but, it really depends on what you're asking for them to do. Okay, so that's, you know, and you, you have to supervise and approve what your consultant's doing for you. However, it's really important to keep in mind that 
even though you might be doing more work, you're going to end up as the person who is responsible for that consultant um, in, in your shop as a nonprofit, right? But your work could be much more effective. That's huge. Um, years ago, I remember coming into a, uh, uh, I forget where it was I was interviewing, one of the jobs I had, and uh, they, uh, uh, people said, well, what are you going to bring? And I said, well, you know, well, you're, you're, it looked like in this case they were doing all sorts of things, but it was all over the place. It wasn't systematic. It wasn't organized so they could get the maximum results. And I said, well, if you bring in me or anybody like me, what you should be getting is not less work, but more effective work. And when you bring in a consultant, that's a lot of what you're looking for is to become more effective and more systematic, not um, as scattered. You know, you need to focus. Now, do you need a nonprofit specialist? And, you know, the answer is no if the work is universal in nature. And, you know, or if you're looking for a business perspective. So what I'm saying here, like universal in nature, a lot of IT work, honestly, it really doesn't matter whether it's done for a small business, for a nonprofit, for a government entity. You know, Windows is Windows, right? Um, you know, Apple is Apple. And so if you have uh, somebody who can deal with what you're doing and they happen to do it for other kinds of organizations, that's fine. That's not a problem. Uh, graphic design might be another one of these. Um, so there's uh, certain uh, kinds of consulting work that people are going to come in that have universal um, work across business sectors. And then, of course, I think it's important that if somebody were to um, bring you a business perspective, um, that's not a bad thing. Right. Um, that, that might. Now, I'm not, and we could. I could do a whole another session on on the businessization of uh, of nonprofits and whether that's good or bad. But some people are looking for a different angle on something. Not a problem. Bring in somebody who's not a nonprofit specialist. However, I will also say that these same people need to understand the culture, and it might be some education on your part, right? And the difference between nonprofits, for-profits, governments, and how that impacts the work they do for you versus the work they're doing for one of their other clients. So there are a lot of times you don't necessarily need a nonprofit specialist. However, there are a lot of times when you do, especially when the work is specific to your mission your uh, or just nonprofits in general. I mean, what comes to mind right off the top of my head is fundraising, grant proposal writing, right? That is specific to nonprofits. Um, you know, businesses, government, they're not going to do that kind of work. Nonprofits are. You need somebody who is a nonprofit specialist in that world. Uh, also, uh, a lot of mission expertise is simply um, focused on nonprofits. You know, if you're doing certain healthcare policy work, say, or if you're doing uh, bird counts or oceanography, you know, whatever it is, right, that there are some things that is just important that, you know, that's tagged to your mission and they uh, will likely only be uh, nonprofit people for that. So you need to look out for those. Now, um, this is important, whoever you get, to understand that you know consultants aren't employees and first of all there's some legal issues here and i would encourage anybody to look up uh, the irs 20 question test about whether somebody is a uh, i think they call them contractors or um, or an employee because uh, it really, a lot of times it comes down to whether they can set their own hours and their own method of doing something. And uh, it helps if they have other clients and it doesn't look like they're working exclusively for you. But there's all these, you know, so I'll leave that up to you to Google. And uh, there's a lot of articles out there on that. But there are some legal definitions here that you ought to be aware of. Um, in hiring practices, like we said earlier, a lot of times consultants are brought in outside the HR system. So so uh, you, uh, while there are a lot of good things in uh, HR practices that are uh, applicable to bring in a consultant, uh, you may not be under the monitoring influence of that department in your organization. So um, that kind of makes a little bit of a difference. And then uh, socially, 
you know, it's important uh, that you understand that there is a different social dynamic with consultants. And it's not because anybody wants to be different necessarily. It's just the nature of somebody coming in episodically uh, or maybe if they're there, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, but you know they're only going to be there for a period of time, uh, you might end up treating them differently. Uh, you might end up, uh, depending on their personality, you know, have other things that you can um, – uh, that you will put up with that you wouldn't necessarily put up with employees because they're only going to be there for a certain. Now, I'm not talking about anything egregious. I'm just talking about just kind of how people work together. Uh, and, um, you know, where they do their work uh, will impact that. If they're, of course, working from a home base, that's different than working from your office, right? But just keep that in mind that, um, that it could be different uh, socially that way. Now, um, politically, this is an important issue here, right? That hiring consultants aren't always popular uh, with the staff because they might think, well, that consultant's getting big bucks, right? That you could use elsewhere, maybe in my paycheck. It's just, you know, folks will think these things. Um, they might th be threatened by the consultant. They're to take their job, make them look bad, get rid of them. They might be jealous of the attention and the pay, right? big bucks that the consultant gets that uh, yeah, every time that person's in all my I can't meet with the boss and it's like you know uh, that they, they don't like that so that's important to keep in mind right and the another political issue is especially with folks who are in leadership and they have consultants do you know will the board think I can't handle things yeah they might they might think that you're bringing a consultant because you just can't do the job that's why you need to to have the conversations with the organizational leadership in terms of the board or you know if if you're in a position or somebody between you and the board about why a consultant might be the best thing to do that will help your organization move ahead in a very efficient way. I mean because a lot of folks have this preconceived image of a consultant right or wrong all sorts of ways, right? And so uh, you might even avoid using the C word, the consultant word, right? They might think consultant means there's trouble or there's an expense issue or something like that. Now, um, won't the board, you know, back to the board, right? You have to describe, to sell this to them, think about describing your need and the expected results in terms of mission delivery. That's really important. You want to focus on cost savings, time savings, income generation, because right in a nonprofit, we're all about mission. And so if you can point to why a consultant, even if it's a, like a fundraising consultant, right? Why that's going to help mission. Now you are moving ahead on selling why this is an important thing for you to do, assuming that you, you know, believe that, which I hope you would. Okay, making your selection. I just threw out then, when you get the PDF here, you can uh, take a more careful look at this, right? But I threw out a bunch of attributes of a great consultant. Right? I mean, you want them to be a fearless speaker, to have self-confidence, to have technical know-how, be relatable, organized, right? Okay you're not going to find all these. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I would love to have every day, oh, all consultants do this. No, but you have to pick the, uh, the attributes that are really important for you and match them with what, uh, what you, you need and the kind of people you're seeing come in front of you. Uh, but take a look at this at your leisure here. I think you'll find some that will be connected for you and what you need.